listening to the voices behind Women's Cricket Chat. That's Alex, Hannah, Georgie and Cassie. Coming up on today's podcast, we've got England international and Western Storm player Katie George. Now we talked to Katie about all things the 100 and her back injury and how rehab's going for her and even a little bit into commentary and what it's really like to commentate on some of your friends. We also talked to Katie about how she got into cricket and how she made the decision to choose cricket over football when it really came down to it. Welcome, Katie George, to the podcast today. I know you've been on briefly before for an International Women's Day chat when you were stuck with just me, but you've got me and Alex with you today. And today it's all about you rather than just international women in general. So welcome to the pod. Thank you. So, yeah, obviously we're going to be talking about all about you, your life in cricket. We've got to cover, I know you're probably very bored of talking about the injuries and all of that. So we're going to chat how rehab's going. And we definitely can't ignore the fielding that you put in this summer because you just put everyone else to shame. So if you want to kick off with, yeah, how is the rehab going from all the injuries? And you just let our listeners know that it's been quite a tumultuous journey with your injuries hasn't it so just let them know from the beginning and what we've got to look forward to from here yeah you could say that couldn't you um I think sort of since I made my debut it pretty much started that year uh had a stress fracture missed out on a couple of overseas tours a world cup and that's pretty much been the story since when I have been fit which has been quite brief I haven't played much cricket to sort of be able to put myself up for selection anyway so it's been a bit of a tricky period I thought I was probably over it when we were in the derby bubble to get make that squad was you know a real target for me um, and I was really happy to get there and felt like I was in a good place but unfortunately that was last winter and I had another stressy again so yeah it's, it's, it's been really tough I don't think you know you can avoid that I think I've cried more this year than I have probably in my whole life I'm not a crier anyone that knows me knows that so yeah no it's, it's been really tough I think it's quite hard to stop those thoughts of um you know are you actually gonna stay fit for a length of time are you gonna be able to do the thing that you love um sort of all these things but then you just you trust the process I believe that if I work as hard as I do that it will it will it will come good and to be fair I've, I'm really thankful that even though this year hasn't quite gone to plan because so I had a setback with my back becoming swollen even though that everything else seemed to be going really well and not being able to bowl competitive ball all year I think that was almost tougher than you know doing the rehabs because it's you know that's black and white you're injured you're not allowed to do cricket you know whereas when scans are showing that there's swelling but you're not really feeling any pain and don't really think that you're injured you know to be able to to be told that you, you know you're not allowed to bowl which is you know that's my main skill and it's, it's the thing that I love doing um, I mean I, I love playing cricket in general but you know bowling that that's why I like playing it was tough and it sort of just seemed to get longer and longer and suddenly you know it's now what end of November nearly December and I'm going through a rehab again so yeah it's, it's been very tough but I'm, I'm looking forward to what the future holds. Yeah and obviously your injury has made you have a lot of setbacks how do you sort of keep positive in those times and how difficult have you found it especially this summer not being able to do what you said which you love to do is bowl it's been incredibly tough um I think you know a lot of people say that they keep their family and friends close and honestly that that is the best thing you know the people closest to you that mean the most to you um you know they've been they've been brilliant and I thank them a lot also um, the ECB I've had Danny and Dave sort of with me all the time and you know they've been fantastic they put a lot of hours uh, that they don't have to do for me so that's great but it's I think it's just trying to put one foot in front of the other and trying to find things that you enjoy you know I was really fortunate to still be a part of the hundred and try and you know do the best that I could in the role that I was able to do for the Welsh Fire and hopefully I did that I try my best But yeah, so just trying to be a good team person, you know, it could be quite easy to be quite down because obviously I wasn't bowling, but you know, that doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help me. Um, And I I think I did that. Yeah, I think you did. I mean, we can't ignore the performances you put in on the field for the Welsh side in the 100. And hopefully you got a whole, whole load of hula hoops out of it too. But yeah, so it was very difficult that you couldn't bowl, but you're still chucking yourself around taking these incredible catches was it nice to be able to put in that kind of performance but like you know what I'm not doing what I'm here for but this is what I'm still doing this is how to be a team player 
I I actually felt quite bad that I wasn't bowling, you know. It's sort of why I got picked in the draft, you know, to open the bowling, you know, make a difference with the ball. So if I can't, it was just how can I do that? I would have liked to have batted a little bit higher, you know, try and feel like I've got a good role that I can offer with the bat. But then it was just, you know, cow to cow. I can thank Luffy for that. Um, She liked to send me a two cow. Um, But yeah, no, it was, I really enjoyed it. And I think that was the thing. I was just really enjoying my cricket. We didn't win as many games as we liked, but... I can honestly say that, you know, I had the best time on and off the pitch and it just makes me really excited for next year. You know, fingers crossed, all going well. I reckon I'll be hitting the ground running early in the season with the regional stuff. And then, you know, by the time the 100 comes around again, you know, I'll be sort of let hand break off and, you know, fly. Yeah, and obviously it was a massive summer for women's cricket and in the 100 in particular. What was it like to be part of that first year of it? Did it really feel like something had changed? I think it has. I think think it's, you know, the obvious thing for me was the crowds. I've played, I think even when I played the home summer in England, the crowds that were in the 100 were just phenomenal. The oval game strikes me as, you know, the best one. The atmosphere that was there, it was a tight game. I think, you know, everyone's glued to the cricket. And I think that's just brilliant. You know, there was, I could see little kids in the crowd, but I could see, you know, sort of probably grandparents as well. And I think that's just amazing. It just had such a wide audience and everyone was loving it it and I think you know the players were loving it just as much and I feel like the you know the crowd can feed off that and they see that and that helps them get more involved and I think you know having people seeing success you know they're more likely to go oh, what's this about let's have a look for myself and then suddenly those few hundreds turns into thousands into tens of thousands and you know that, that's how the game grows. I know it was obviously upsetting for you not being able to open the bowling for Welsh Fire but you did adapt and you adapted spectacularly with your fielding you were voted the women's fielder of the tournament what was that like for you oh it, it meant it meant a lot um I, I didn't even know until one of the girls told me if probably a few games in that that was actually a thing and you know gave it gave me a little bit of stick for it um but yeah it was just it was really nice um you know some incredible fielders out there and I think you know sometimes women's sport can you know be unfairly judged and I think fielding in cricket can be one of those things And actually, you know, there's some incredibly high standards set. And personally, I want to lead that. And I I aim to be the best fielder wherever I am, whether that's in the England setup, Welsh Fire, Western Storm. And also, I feel like you can bring people with you, with the girls, some of the younger girls. I was trying to lend a few pointers. And, you know, it's just little things and they can make a real big difference. Um, It's something I'm very passionate about. And, yeah, it was just nice to get a reward for it, I guess. It's funny because you say some of the younger girls. I mean, it's not like you're exactly a grey haired granny in the corner yourself. You're 22 now. Yeah. Yeah. And so you were what? What was it? 18 when you made your England date. Yeah. Maybe a week. Yeah. Oh, a week before. Wow. Mad times. And then then you can have, you know, quite a few on a few bevs on the side. (laughs) celebrate but yeah what I was I was looking into this and you made a debut after taking a hat trick in a warm-up game so was that a bit of a whirlwind a bit like oh mad I've taken this hat trick in a warm-up game oh cool I'm getting my call up now was it what was that like um I think the whole thing was a little bit of a whirlwind I didn't think I was anywhere near the uh, first team I uh, Robbo the head coach at the time um, asked me to sort of come in and bowl a bit with the girls sort of the back end of that summer when they went to the ashes um, and then I was with them during the winter but in all honesty I thought I was just you know a bit of a net bowler for them quite useful and then yeah he, he sat me down and asked if I wanted to go to India and obviously I was a bit shocked but yeah it was a pleasant surprise and then sort of saw it as a sort of developmental opportunity you know to be around the girls more be with Robbo tweak a few things in my bowling and I was actually uh, sort of halfway through changing my action so I wasn't originally meant to play that warm-up game I got the team got told the uh, night before and I wasn't I wasn't playing and then the morning of the game I got a tap on the shoulder saying oh you are playing and I was like are you sure the team yesterday and obviously I mean I was in shambles it was carnage I forgot my, forgot my kit it was all sorted but yeah it was no it was it was surreal um, and then yeah to get hat trick I, I wasn't expecting it because the A side was quite strong there was a few of the first teamers in there didn't think I was going to open the bowl and open the bowling yeah it was I think sometimes though it's good because you, you don't think about it too much it's sort of you just take it in your stride and hopefully it goes well and luckily it did and then I ended up playing quite a lot of that sort of try series but yeah it was it was surreal and then to come back I thought that'd be kind of it because there was a few sort of you know Catherine wasn't on that tour so I thought all right sort of back to sort of county stuff at the time Super League at the time but then I was involved in that summer too and yeah I think you know unfortunately that stress fracture that came at the end of that summer sort of stopped my momentum a lot and as a bowler you love to take wickets 
love to be involved in that action. Your first international wicket was Amy Satterthwaite. What did it feel like to take your first wicket? And did it sort of spur you on and give you that desire to go on and want to play more for England, perhaps to get more wickets? Yeah, definitely. I feel like I've got quite a good record against Sackle um, Sway. Got in the Super League a couple of times. So I came into that quite confident, thinking that, you know, I had one up on her. She probably didn't think that. I was quite looking forward to facing me. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, it, I think, you know, that international wicket, there's just, there's no other feeling like it. You you sort of almost go, you take a deep breath and just actually you, you deserve to be there. There's always that little bit of unknown, I think. But yeah, once you start get, picking up a couple of wickets, uh, I personally, I definitely felt right. Okay. I've got this almost because I think yeah especially in India I was I was like gee what, what am I doing here kind of thing but yeah definitely that summer I felt a lot more settled. Is it quite addictive like you just you take one you want a second you want more you want more and is that something you're now striving to get back to for those international wickets? Yeah I think anyone that's captain me knows I'm an absolute pain um, I want the ball in my hand all the time any key moments I, I want to be bowling um, I love it when the batters are coming at you I think that's when I'm at my best when I'm in the battle it could be a little bit of a cliche, but that, that's that's what I enjoy. So, yeah, so it, it's probably the one sort of burning thing that just I know that feeling it will all be worth it when I get back into regional cricket, into the hundred. And I'm not thinking too much about England stuff at the moment. I think I think everyone that's sort of involved in the decision making knows that I need to play some cricket. And that's the most important thing. And just to be enjoying it again and not worrying about anything else. But, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And that's probably the thing that gets me through. You obviously mentioned that you played in India. What was it like to play in front of big crowds there? Because obviously India is such a big cricketing nation. Like There's so many fans at all the games. What was it like for you being an English player? It was incredible. I think, you know, you watch it on TV and it doesn't really hit home. You know, before you're sort of playing, your mums and dads are there, you know, maybe a man and his dog. And then suddenly you've got people chanting India. You know, it's echoing around the concrete stadiums. It was, I mean, I remember I was... I made my debut with um, ADI, Alice Davidson Richards and Brani Smith, and we all were sort of just like, wow, this is incredible. We actually changed it because they shout India, 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 but we were going ADR, 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 and that just seemed to make it a whole lot better. Um, so, yeah, I think that helps. That's the way we dealt with it. But, yeah, it certainly helped me sort of once I'm sort of in and on a play and I kind of like to block it out. I mean, I quite like interacting with the crowd. I found that quite enjoyable in the hundred, a little bit of banter back and forth. But yeah, it was it was incredible. I mean, the country is just beautiful. I've been lucky enough to go to Mumbai twice now and it just it amazes me every time. Yeah, I'd love to go back very soon. And um, so you say you get quite involved in all the banter and that kind of thing. Do you ever find yourself, you know, giving a bit of a send off, getting involved in a bit of sledging? I try not to but yeah it's sometimes in the heat of the moment it, it can happen but yeah no I, I can say a couple of things now and then um normally I'm probably one of those people that if if you're not doing too well or your team's not doing too well that's I probably won't say anything I think it should all be sort of nice enough yeah I think you know there's there's the line that you shouldn't cross that's that's how I see it interesting and cricketers aren't necessarily known for being too rude so I think you'll be all right there but you did very nearly become a footballer so we've got to we've got to touch on that one there a bit because you know we love cricket here and we, we dabble in other sports but we'll take cricket over football anytime so you played some of the England age group stuff and you also played at was it Portsmouth so what made you decide cricket instead of football and make that really correct decision I mean is it correct at the moment <laughs> um I don't know I'm joking I'm joking yeah no I I mean I love football I, pl- I played football before I played cricket um, it was probably my first love in sort of the sporting world, if you like, and an uh, avid Chelsea supporter. And so yeah, it was incredibly difficult. My dad was very good. I had a lot of conversations with him because, you know, coaches start asking, oh, do, you, do you sort of know what you want to do? Do you feel like you should start to make a decision? And, you know, at that time, you're 15, 16, and you're thinking, oh, I've got ages, I'm young. I don't need to make a decision. I can play everything. I can play every day. That's fine. But obviously, you've, you can't. It was physically um, time. It was impossible to be able to equally put as much into both sports there was late nights I was doing homework not much homework but sleeping in the car on the way home from training getting back at midnight you know it just wasn't I actually was meant to go to uni but then took a sort of took a gap year to just try and calm because it was just the workload was incredible and I probably that was the year that I was like right I need to make a decision but I chose cricket I think just how you how you're always in the game. I think with football sometimes you don't you don't always get to touch the ball much, make a difference. Whereas, you know, 
it's the same with football cricket I want the ball I want to be able to make a difference in the field I'm thinking give me the ball give me the ball bowling I'm thinking give me the ball give me the ball sometimes batting I'm like you, you can do that bit I'll, I'll sit here I'll have a cup of tea but I just I just want to be involved and I think you know you never quite know what's going to happen in cricket and it keeps you very level I think you know you enjoy the highs but there's also some lows and I think you know just because you don't quite know what's coming around the corner that keeps that keeps me on my toes and you mentioned that there's highs and lows obviously especially with the injuries and that kind of thing who has been there to support you during those lows and like how are you working through those to get back to full fitness I think like I said previously it's the people you know that mean a lot to you you know that they've been brilliant but also I think it's being honest and it's okay to talk you know I've been very much someone in the past that's everything's fine even if it's not and then suddenly all those little things build up and it's a big thing when actually you know that thing that's sort of blown up is probably very little and you know you probably had a bit more of a reaction than you should but I think yeah I've, I've had quite an open dialogue with our sports psych back with England Phoebe she's been brilliant and I think it's just you know you're allowed to have bad days and it's actually you can still get quite a lot out of those you're not going to turn up to the gym at 7 30 in the morning you know happy as Larry thinking yes let's do this every time that's all right you still how do you get something out of it what am I gonna what am I gonna do today that is gonna help me get to where I want to be and I think it's taken a little while I mean I've had a year of practice but yeah it's taken me a little while to sort of probably get good at it I'd say but I just yeah I think the people close to me they've been brilliant and I think you can always get better I'm always, I know that talking's helped me. So talking more, that is the best thing. Um, And actually, quite often people are feeling the same as you. And maybe it's a slightly different situation, but you know, you're not having these crazy thoughts that no one else is thinking or have thought in the past. And actually, a lot of people can help you that you probably didn't think they could. And yeah, I'd I'd, I'd encourage anyone, whatever it is, is, it helps a lot. And something that some people may not know about you is that you are a twin and you have a twin brother. Is he one of the driving forces behind your competitiveness? Yeah, I I definitely say so. Yeah, I think, you know, we're quite close. Um, We've probably had like every every sort of siblings do. We grow apart and then we come back together. But he's been great. I think, you know, as a kid, always trying to outdo each other. Yeah, I think we've had many battles over the time. I think sort of sneaking off when mum and dad are working or whatever and playing a bit of cricket in the living room and trying not to hit the TV. Um, I think that all stems into that competitive nature. We're still not as much now, but we used to go to the park, you know, kick football around, bowl a ball. I mean, during lockdown, you know, he, he, he was a lifesaver. I was, I was sort of stuck him off against, the nets were closed, but sort of stuck him off against it used a little bit of the grass and bowled at him in you know they're pretty spicy conditions so fair enough for him standing there but he's also a wicket keeper so you know that's very beneficial for me getting my bowling workloads in but no yeah he, he's been brilliant he's quite quiet I'm probably more of the extrovert out of the two of us um but he yeah he's, he tells me when I need to shut up that's for sure growing up did you guys get to play a lot of cricket together not just in the living room but yeah. like down your local club yeah, so we've played for the same club pretty much since started cricket. He started cricket before me. And then we played in Dorset together for Paul. Um, and then we moved to Romsey and played for Romsey. And um, yeah, it wouldn't have been the same growing up without having him. You know, you're playing in an all-boys team. And to be fair, you know, my experiences have been mostly good other than a little bit of banter, which, you know, I mean, personally, I thrive off it. So I've never been too disheartened. He was the first one to uh, protect me, if you like. Sometimes I'd be like, Tom might be cool, be cool. But yeah, no, he's he's been brilliant. So have my parents. They've always been involved in the cricket clubs that we've been with, helping out the bar, my mum's schools. She scores even if we're not playing. Um, so yeah, so they've been brilliant for me. It's a proper family affair with the Georges. It's like, right, we're all setting off to cricket today. We're going to play, you're going to play, you do the bar, you do the scoring, we'll just take over everywhere. Basically, yeah. they couldn't run it without you. I love that though yeah. as well, because so often you hear... You know, girls get into cricket because their brother, you know, just shoved them and was like, right, you're just going to have to field, you know. But you were like, right, come on, it's locked down. Get out there. We're going to go play out here. And you're dragging him along just as much as he was dragging you along, which is so fun. I love that. And also, I just love seeing you and your mum on Insta together are just like proper mum-daughter goals, just like heading off to Pembrokeshire together and all that, you know. It's great. Yeah, no, she's, she's a beauty. I've got a lot to thank her for. You'd think she would know really the rules of cricket. She still asks me. Where, where this fielder is or what's this um but so I don't really know how she scores but she, she gets all the colorful pens out she's she knows what she's doing but yeah no she's she's a little bit aware of the fairies when it comes to cricket get that woman a paper chase sponsorship <laughs> for all the colored pens but aside from your 
cricket on the pitch, you've also done a bit of commentary. So how did you get into that? And are you loving it? Is it quite scary? How's it, how's it been? Yeah, um, I think the BT sports stuff that I did at the start of the year, that was that was really scary. I sort of said yes to it. Oh, yeah, it'd be fine. Um, and honestly, it was one of the best experiences I've done, but I thought I was doing okay. And then you have sort of a five minute call into when the show starts and you're on air. And I've like, there's like a table no more than five metres away from me. And I've just, there's a glass of water. So I was like, right, okay, don't want to get, have a dry mouth and, you know, get all croaky like the first 10 minutes. So I was like, right, I'm going to have a quick drink and then, you know, be set. And I've like gone to go to this table and my legs are shaking like nobody's business. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm not okay. Right, okay, compose. But I'm in heels and I don't wear heels that much. So, you know, I'm walking a little bit funny anyway. So I was like, be fine, be fine. I like, got my water and I'm like, Phew. and then I've just sat down again and gone, what on earth am I doing here? No one wants to listen to me. Um, and I was like, it's the middle of the night. This is just crazy. I mean, the first 10 minutes, I could not tell you what I said. I haven't listened back to it. I'm just too scared to. But people said that I was okay. So, I mean, I'm sure they'd tell me if I wasn't. And then the other times that I did it, it was it was a lot better. I think that just getting over that first time was, was the issue. But yeah, I, I was more nervous doing that than I was playing for England, hands down. Yeah, I was going to say, which was scarier, your first commentary stint or your first ball in international cricket? It, it was hard commentary, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't get too nervous playing cricket. I think I just I enjoy it too much. I think I, I also have always believed that, you know, nerves means adrenaline. As soon as you get onto that pitch, it changes and it helps you. I think, yeah, I've, I've probably only got nervous a couple of like when I um, was getting close to bowling again this sort of my um april time it was more actually oh like is everything okay am i doing this right so i was probably off the pitch that i think a lot more whereas on the pitch I sort of sort of just you know i get a bit of white line fever and off i go but yeah off the pitch i think it's been more difficult because you you just have that nagging thought if everything's okay and i think history has also made it that actually sometimes it hasn't been okay um, so I think that's been the biggest hurdle and it was a similar with the commentary like once you do it once you're okay and I think you know it'll be like that with cricket it'll be that first game that I bowl or even before that you know the first time I bowl drills and then you get to half run and full run um, it's just getting over those little hurdles and then hopefully I'll be flying. And how do you stop that from hindering your cricket at all because obviously you can't help but have for use of a better for want of a better word niggle in your brain when you're thinking about bowling like oh god I don't want to injure myself don't want to do that again how do you overcome that or is it just because you know that you've put in all the effort up to that point I think it's massively knowing that I've done everything possible like before obviously when I started bowling again something wasn't quite right and I got a bit of a reaction but I know that I did everything possible there wasn't anything more I could do and it was just one of those things and I think it'd be no different this time I know that I'll put everything into it probably sometimes I need to take a step back and go right I need a break um don't have to go 100 miles an hour all the time but I think it's you know you're going to have those voices um and something that I use I didn't come up with it but you sort of have them in your suitcase next to you and you know they're there you accept they're there that's okay they can be there but also you're here and actually it's okay to think those things but they just come along with you and you just carry them with you and that's helped quite a lot that's me personally if it helps anyone else great and just sort of being aware of it and then knowing that everything that I've done will be enough because it's similar when it's no injuries or when you're coming up against Alyssa Healy it's no different you know that you've done all the work training you know you've executed your Yorkers your slow or whatever it is you know you've done the practice so you back yourself when you go out and I've taken the same sort of outlook to it with injuries. Also, just a quick one on your commentary. You were the go-to person for this year's finals of the Rachel Hayhoe Flint Trophy and the Charlotte Edwards Cup. Is it difficult for you sometimes commentating on these cricketers who also happen to be your friends? Yeah, it was. It was certainly, I was, I was very sort of privileged to feel, you know, to be asked to do it. But yeah, no, it was really good fun. I mean, for one of the finals, I was with ADR, and you know, she's a great crack. And then it's just, it's a really good experience as well. But it's quite hard because you want to stay as neutral and unbiased as possible. But then, you know, best mates batting. So yeah, so it was difficult. But I think I always just try and be as truthful as possible. And um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. I just say, say what I see and hopefully it comes out all right and I don't make a muffet of myself but yeah it's, it's also nice to be sort of there you know firsthand to see people doing well and you know to watch the Vipers lift the trophy in the last final was you know it, it felt right and you know they fully deserved it it was, it was a close game um, I think the neutrals enjoyed it better than the dugouts that's for sure no really enjoyed it. 
I mean, you've lifted a trophy with the Vipers before, so you've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. How did it feel, though? Do you ever find it's quite difficult watching you? But like, I really wish I was out there playing for Western Storm instead of watching the enemy take each other on in the final. We were so close to getting there as well. We had a bit of a bad start at the start of the year, but, you know, we came back and, you know, we played some really good cricket and, you know, just, just missed out on a bonus point. I think it was in the end. It was that close. It's obviously really tough and you, you wish you were there. That's why we play sports, why we play cricket is to be in those moments and hopefully come out the right side of it. And I think as long as we try and put ourselves in those moments as much as possible, then I reckon next year I'd watch out for Western Storm. Yeah, I was just going to say, because you were quite unlucky to just miss out on the Charlotte Edwards Cup finals day due to net run rate, which was ridiculous. But does this show the level that women's cricket is getting to that is becoming more and more competitive? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we've seen that the last probably four years is that, you know, sometimes you could probably argue there was a couple of stronger regions, uh, whereas I just I don't think that's the case anymore. Anyone can genuinely turn up and beat anyone. And that's really exciting. And it's also given opportunities to like the Grace Scrivens, you know, she's done brilliantly. So is Alice Capsey. But then also a few of the slightly older people are also putting their hand up and, you know, doing really well. And it's just lovely to see because, you know, and but that also means that there's opportunities. They can go and play in a hundred team and do well. Whereas, you know, before, what was that next step if it wasn't England? So I think it's a really nice pathway for girls to aspire to because before, if it wasn't England, what, what was it? And now there's, I think there's just, you know, there's a real clear pathway. And I think it will make girls want to play cricket. You know, it's a career. It's a genuine option. Yeah. And I love that. It's not just England. There is domestic because there are people out there who's, that is, you know, domestic cricket is what they do. And they might know that England isn't going to be their calling, but they have got that stability there. And you've also got people who bounce back and forth. So what's been amazing to see someone like Tash Farron, who has played this domestic, been amazing in the 100 and found her way back into the England fold. And then you've got someone like Fran Wilson, who's retired from international, but she's come to join you in the West Country at the Storm. What's that going to be like? I mean, I'm so happy that Fran's coming back. Not only will she be a great addition to the team, but off the pitch, she's one of the best people I know. So very, very happy. Um, But I think it it just shows what success it's been and that it's only going to get better. You know, it's still really new and, you know, it's better battled against covid which you know has been a bit of a nightmare just just in general in the world so i think you know what cricket's done and what the ecb's done is phenomenal really and it's, it's only going to grow there's going to be less sort of outside restrictions and i think women's cricket is just just going to thrive and is there going to be a battle for the fielding crown at western storm between you and fran wilson now oh, i think there's got to be we, we want to outdo each other she takes a lot of specky so i need to work you know, up my game a little bit. But yeah, I think I think with anything, it's healthy competition, isn't it? You want to sort of help each other get better and you want to get better yourself and sort of having that competition, you know, it makes every training session, you know, as much realistic as possible. And that, that's only a good thing. Yeah. And so looking ahead now to pre-season and that kind of thing, what's it, what are your hopes looking ahead to this future? You know, what do you think the Storm are looking like? You think you can make finals next year now? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, Fran's an excellent addition, you know, the experience that she has, but also, you know, the runs that she brings with her. Um, I think, you know, I think someone like Lauren Fyde has had a really good year in terms of development. You know, she's getting more more consistent as each year comes. And, you know, I I don't like facing her. I can tell you that for free. So I'm I'm excited to see her. You've got Georgia Hennessy, who's, you know, Miss, miss, well, it'll be Mrs. soon, but Miss Dependable. So I think we've got really good mix of youth and, sort of wisdom um but and hopefully I'll be back back bowling too and being able to sort of strive to be that all-rounder that I want to be do you class yourself in the youth or the wisdom somewhere in between somewhere in between I like I like to have a bit of wisdom but sometimes I'm just a little bit of a kid so (laughs) it depends on the day so on the topic of franchises and the likes we've talked 100 we've talked KSL we've talked hey ho we've talked Charlotte Edwards what would you say to going abroad and joining say a women's big bash Side because we've seen some of the English girls go out this year and obviously Wongi and Boosh have been out there Wongi absolutely just she'd been loving it down there what would you say about joining a side in Australia would you go for it oh bite your hand off um I think it would suit me as a bowler personally um you know seeing the Australian quicks it makes me sort of anxious to get out there and you know it's it looks like a pretty good place to be as well um never turned down an opportunity yeah I'd, I'd love to go And we can't have you on the pod without asking you this. Uh, 
obviously you're flying the flag for Western Storm, but what was it like to witness Sophie Luff's 157 not out? Yeah, I was actually um, at a wedding that weekend and I can tell you for free that I watched a lot of her innings, probably more than I should have. Yeah, no, it was it was brilliant. And I think, you know, she works so hard and to see her sort of get the reward at the end of the season, you know, and to score a lot of runs, a lot of runs. You know, I'm really pleased for her, but it was it was phenomenal. And I hope she scores a few more hundies come next year. And what is it like to be captained by Sophie Luff, not just at Western Storm, but at Welsh Fire as well? Oh, personally, I think she's a top captain. I think I think with Welsh Fire, she probably had to learn on her feet a lot. But I think, you know, she took everything in her stride and she was brilliant. I thought that, you know, she, she probably got dealt a little bit of a tough deal with Welsh Fire with, you know, Lannan probably, she, you know, she should have come over, but obviously couldn't. But, you know, she, she did a brilliant job. It's an absolute pleasure. I can be a little bit awkward to deal with sometimes and she deals with me well. So, yeah, no, looking forward to it again. You're like the toddler in the corner. And she's like, pipe down, <laughs> pipe down. <laughs> Pretty much, she's like, KG, shut up. And I'm like, okay. But it's nice to have that kind of relationship. Like, that's sort of the family atmosphere you want. It's professional when it needs to be professional, but also she can tell you to shut up and get in your corner. And that's what makes Storm so great, I think. Um, obviously, I moved there a couple of years ago now and haven't played too much or done as much as possible, but the way they've welcomed me in, and, you know, they've been great with me. It hasn't been easy for me. Um, you know, you want to, you move to somewhere, you want to sort of do well quite quickly. But yeah, they've been very patient with me. But yeah, no, they've been great. I think Spark has been good as well, the coach and sort of the support staff too. Um, I've spent a lot of time on physio beds. So Jesse, you're a good one. And you mentioned, obviously, Meg Lanning was meant to be coming over for the Welsh Fire. What would it be like to have someone like that in your side? And who's the that person you'd love to play alongside or play against? I mean, I was pretty stoked to have Lannan as captain. You know, she's been quite successful, shall we say, sometimes at the expense of being, which I'm not too happy about. But yeah, no, I think she would have been someone brilliant to sort of be under and to learn from. But I just, I think even when Healy was over for Yorkshire Diamonds and I was there for a year, sort of just picking her brain, it was brilliant um, to see how sort of the more experienced people that have been doing it for years um, sort of go about their business and you learn on and off the field. But no, no, it's, it's been awesome. I'd take Lannan. I'd take anyone, to be fair. Anyone that I can learn from. I'm like a sponge. One more quick thing on Luffy. It must be incredibly nice to have a captain who brings you baked goods. I mean, I miss a lot of these training sessions. She's bringing these goods. So I don't know if it's, you know, it's on purpose or not. Um, but I was lucky enough uh, last Christmas, she brought in a few, well, she brought in two cakes, I think. And I mean, she's wasted. So I think she's to sell them. They're phenomenal. The great British bake laugh. Yeah. 100%. See what I did there. Yeah. I'm here all week. <laughs> I think we might have exhausted you this evening, especially because it's what? Oh, gosh, it's getting late. It's near bedtime. But um, <laughs> we always like to round off these podcasts with some quick fire questions. And in the absence of Hannah, her favourite one that we like to start with is, and we touched on it a little bit earlier, what is your favourite sledge? My favourite sledge? I mean, mind the windows. It's got to be. Mind the windows. And you're not just talking about you and your brother in the living room there. No, I'm not. Hannah's other favourite one is a favourite tea item at a village cricket. Village cricket. You know, there's, there's some belt, isn't there? I just, homemade scone. And cream or jam first? Well, if you flip it upside down, it doesn't matter, does it? Put it all in in one. <laughs> no, no, no. Specify on the question because Wongy got confused when we asked her. That doesn't surprise me. Oh, yeah, she said um, a teaspoon. A teaspoon. And a mug. Because we said, what's your favourite tea item? So she said a spoon and a mug. And I mean, I honestly could tell you. I reckon cream. Okay. That wrong answer should have been jam. Oh, I don't know. Favourite person you've ever played against? Against Hayley Matthews. I've, I've been lucky enough to play with her and against her, and she's, she's a good crack. Your cricketing hero or idol? Oh, can I say two? Uh, I'd say it was Macram. And Catherine Brown. And Wes Macron was who your dad showed you videos of, wasn't he, when you started I as a went bowler? I went to the TV, shall I say, and got told to watch him. So I did. It's, it's worked. So it's, I, I bowl left arm, and that's pretty handy, isn't it? I mean, it, it'll, it'll do. It'll help. Last Netflix series or other streaming site that you binged? Binged Wentworth, but I'm just watching Grace. I love Grace, and the new series is obviously out at the moment. So every Wednesday, that's me. And is it too early to put your Christmas decorations up in November? 
Um, I think now's fine. Um, I was at the range the other day, probably the first week of November. Their Christmas song was on, and that was too much for me. Favourite Christmas song? Bit of Wham last Christmas. Best friend in cricket? Friend. I mean, Emily Windsor will get a bit upset if I don't oh, say her, I think. The favourite ground you've played at? Um, the Oval, purely on the atmosphere. And a ground you would like to play at? Probably the MCG. Full? Full yeah. MCG, yeah? Yeah. Um, and if you hadn't been a cricketer or a footballer, what would you like to do? I'd be a teacher. Mm, what kind? What, PE? Yeah, and I've got a bit of a soft spot for history as well. So a bit of both. Ooh, favourite um, period of history? Uh, all the wars. Any war, I've read it. Interesting. I was not expecting that, but we'll go with that. I'd have you done as a geographer. Don't know why. Yeah. Oh, no, I was afraid of geography. Oh, I agree. Ask me where people are. I'm useless. Yeah, it's like, you have been there. I still don't know. Give me a map and I've got, I'm, I'm stuck. I can't do it. That's not really geography, but I can't read it. I can't, you know, I'd get lost. Do you think Chelsea will win the league? Yes, I do. We had a little bit of a slip up, but, um, you know, we've had a few players coming back from injury. And I mean, Jorginho, what was he doing? What was he doing? Yeah. Favourite Chelsea player? Uh, current, Mount. Okay. Previous Drogba. Okay, so you've got a choice. Chelsea win the Premier League or you win the 100 with Welsh. Oh. Win the 100? Okay. Okay, fair. I'll give you that one. So you're not really a big Chelsea fan enough, you know. You'll take that uh, glory instead. I just take losing. This is true. Okay, we'll take that one. Um, summer or winter? Summer. Ashes prediction. For men's and women's? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I reckon we're going to wipe the floor with them in both. Yeah, love that. That is what we like to think. Confidence, rate that. Favourite beverage? Uh, I'm impartial to a bit of gin. Gin and tonic, but with lemonade because I'm not I said I don't really like tonic. Mm, we like that. Okay, if you have a Christmas drink, do you go Bailey's or mulled wine? Uh, Bailey's. Okay, nice. Good choice. In your hot chocolate, which is always a good yeah. call. And do we only allow that at Christmas or was it in all Oh, no, no, no. But I just thought it made it sound a bit like we were less alcoholic if we related it to Christmas, you know? I went shopping. It's because it's Christmas. Oh, it's fine, you know? That's my theory. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, what else did I have? Um, Alex, you got any others? Favourite musician? Sound Fender. Oh, nice. Favourite genre of music? Um, I mean, the amount of gym I'm doing at the moment, I'm going to have to say rock, but no. Um, probably if, in the car, I listen to a lot of R&B. But yeah, a lot of, lot of gym music at the moment. Nice. If there's a song that's going to get you on the dance floor, what is it? Anything from Mamma Mia. God, it was on yesterday, I watched it again. <laughs> yeah. So um, what were you go to karaoke song? I mean, Maroon 5. Interesting. We're not going She Will Be Love because that's very high. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Who's got the worst fashion sense in the team? In the team? England team or Western Storm? Western Storm. Western Storm. Oh, who am I going to answer? I mean, I've said great things about Luffy, but um, a little bit of improvement, maybe. And who's got the worst chat? Worst chat, Lauren Filer. Oh, that was no hesitation there. <laughs> Bless her. And who's the dressing room clown? If you can't think of someone, it's probably you. I mean, I'm going to say Nat, our keeper, Nat Wraith. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm probably second. Or Gibbo. Gibbo. You ever play pranks? I've, I've done a few. Best prank you've done? No, I can't, I can't. The one that I can't say that one, no. I am saying no comment. Yeah, I'll take that. Who's got the best dance moves in the team? I mean, Gibbo tries very hard, so I'm going to say Gibbo. 10 out of 10 for effort. We love that. I think effort is half the way when it comes to dancing. Yeah, well, actually, no, I'm going to take, sorry, Gibbo, Georgia Hennessy, that girl can dance. Honestly, like, Strictly. Get that girl on Strictly. Oh, I can imagine, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Would you ever do Strictly? I'd love to. I'd be the one that everyone feels sorry for, getting all the vote. I just want the outfits. Yeah. <laughs> I can't dance. Just give me the outfit. They play good music, too. This is true. Right, well, I, oh, look who's come to join us. I Hello. Think. Um, I think I've exhausted all my quick fire questions. How about you, Alex? Yeah, I think I think we've asked some really probing questions. So. I mean, the dancers were. The, it's very important who's the best dancer in a side. So you know, we've got that one now. So it's okay. That'll be front of the newspaper tomorrow. None of this sure. COVID variant. You know, mm-hmm. what variant? What exactly? Exactly. No. Um, but 
yeah, Katie, we won't keep you for the rest of the evening because, you know, MasterChef's on it soon and we've all got to go watch MasterChef. So, Katie, where can our listeners find you on social media if they want to keep up with your rehab? Well, they just want to be nosy and find out about your life and come and see Storm play next season. Um, best one be my Instagram, uh, Katie underscore George 99. But yeah, I do a lot of my rehab stuff on there because I think it's probably, I think almost for me, it's nice to see that progression as well. If you get a little bit lost and think it's taking months, you actually, you see where you're going from there. Love that. And people can get some idea of what exercises they can be doing if they need to rehab in the same kind of way. So it's really nice. Exactly. I call myself a bit of a back expert nowadays. I mean, if anyone is, you know, you talk about experience. I think, I think you can tick that one off. My dog is also currently digging up my bed. But yeah, Katie George, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been so nice to probably catch up, chat all things cricket. And it's so nice to hear and see that you are on the road to recovery. And we're going to have you back out there, ball in hand, not just because you're taking speckies in the field, but because you are taking amazing wickets, more hat tricks, you know, and then just casually smashing the ball all over the place. Because, you know, why not? You can do it all. So thank you so much for joining us. And it's been really really fab to have you on women's cricket chat thanks so much massive thank you to katie for coming on and being a guest on the pod we wish her all the luck in the world with her rehab and that we get to see her back and fighting fit in next season's regional competitions it was also really great to get her perspective on how the game has moved forward and how she wants to help be part of that change and leave a mark on the game for future generations and wants to help as much as she can and to all our listeners if you want to keep up to date with everything we're doing you can follow us on twitter at w cricket chat on instagram at women's cricket chat and if you want to give us a like on facebook we are women's cricket chat if you'd like to give our personal twitters a follow then it's at hannity1194 at georgie heath 27 at cassie coombs 98 and i'm at alex Jane pereira on twitter this has been women's cricket chat tune in next time <laughs>